So polar coordinate system. The polar coordinate system is a coordinate system that allows you to find the coordinates of a point in space, but this time we're using angles instead of just x comma y. Now the polar coordinate system consists of a pole, which is similar to an origin, and it is a point, and a polar axis. Now you can draw your polar axis in any direction, so let's just draw it this way. So that's our polar axis. And if you have a point, say we have this point over here, okay what you're going to do is use the polar axis as your initial side you draw your terminal side through that point and there is your angle theta okay and your polar coordinates are going to be r which is the distance between the pole and the point so that piece of your terminal side and your theta so the polar coordinates are r comma theta now, we do a lot of conversions back and forth, but before we do that, we're going to actually plot a couple points so you can see this in action. Now, what we usually do here is we place a polar, the pole at the origin on an XY coordinate system, and then our polar axis on the positive x-axis for convenience and then just draw a, a circles of different radii and our you know label a couple of angles and we have our polar coordinate grid now if we had a point say a of 2 4 pi over 3 this means r is 2 and our theta is 4 pi over 3 so we're going to go to our second circle of radius 2 here, go around to 4 pi over 3 and place our point A. Okay? Now, what if we had B as 1, negative 3 pi over 4? Well, in that case, where 1 means the unit circle, so we're going to be on the first circle here. Negative 3 pi over 4, that's a negative angle. So that means, of course, we go in this direction around. And that's going to end up right there. So there is B. And then finally, what if you have negative 2 5 pi over 6? Now, the 2 part is telling you we're on the second circle again. Now go to 5 pi over 6 on the second circle. Now instead of placing your point there, because your r is negative, the negative is, is telling you to change direction. So you follow that across to 11 pi over 6 and put your point there. So there is c. Now let's talk about conversions. So if you have your point in space, say, I don't know why that happened, um, right there, Okay, let's draw your terminal side. Okay, here's our angle. Now that point has x comma y and an r comma theta. And what is the relationship between these two? Well, if you draw a right triangle, this is y and this is x. So um, cosine of theta is going to be x over r. Of course, r is the distance between these two points up here. So x is r cosine theta. And then sine theta is y over r. So y is r sine theta. And of course, since this is a right triangle, Pythagorean formula says that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then we have another relationship we can use. Tangent of theta is y over x. Okay, so let's look at a couple of conversions. So for example, say that we had um, the point 4, 11 pi over 6. So we want to convert this to rectangular. Well, we're going to use the formulas x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So you just plug in, so 4 cosine of 11 pi over 6 is 4 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is 2 square root of 3. And then here, 4 sine of 11 pi over 6 
is 4 times negative 1 half, which of course is negative 2. Okay, <clears throat> point conversions from rectangular to polar, for example, 4, 4. I tell people to plot your point so you know where you're at. So we are in quadrant 1. Okay, so we're looking for this angle and we're looking for our R. Okay, well, R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So that's going to be 4 squared plus 4 squared is 32. So R is the square root of 32, which is the square root of 16 times 2, 4 square root of 2. Okay, now tangent of theta is going to be 4 over 4 because it's y over x, which is 1. So the um, quadrant 1 angle that has a tangent of 1 is pi over 4. So 4 square root of 2, pi over 4. The end.